Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Streggy, and today I have another review for you of an animated uh, uh, film from Japan that was directed by Hisayuki uh, Tor Toriyumi's, uh, 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 who, um, and the film is called Lily C A T Cat from 1987. And I saw this film many years ago, at least it seems years ago, in uh, 1995, 1996, uh, when you, you know sci-fi had its sci-fi anime Saturdays, um, and uh, you had. Apollo Smile, a live action anime uh, figure um, hosting um, a series of animation films. And this was one of them. And I remember bits and pieces of this film, but I watched it in its entirety. And I remember Akira, uh, the animation being on at that, uh, at that point in time and uh, so on and so forth. And I thought this was one of the darkest films that I, I have ever seen and it has um horror um science fiction elements that um derive from you know horror films that i know uh because it is actually kind of a twist between um the 1979 film aliens alien um, and uh, John Carpenter's The Thing from 1972. So, uh, especially since, you know, that uh, the sh Starship's computer is called Mother, just like in... Uh, the movie Alien. Both computer rooms look the same, and an undercover android is revealed in a scene in the room in both titles, as well as the monster uh, in here has the exact same characteristics as the alien from The Thing. So you have kind of a mix. So you have a crew of, uh, say, 18 crew members who are um, on a ship, um, that evidently can travel um, 20 years and have the crew members only age one year um, by a company by the name of Sincan. And we have In the very beginning, we uh, see the characters get to get, uh, together, and st uh, and uh, you see that there is a um, evidently the president's uh, uh, the president of the company's daughter is actually um, is actually present with her um, live animal uh, Lily. Um, and we have a series of other characters, including a captain. Um, and I saw the English dub of this. Uh, so clearly they're on this uh, a voyage. All of a sudden, uh, some, uh, something airborne in space uh, is evidently traveling towards the, the ship. And uh, automatically the ship detected that uh, evidently this might be a um, human body and it um, evidently brings it in. Um, something gets torn um, on its way through and it hit uh, into the water systems. Uh, the next thing we see is apparently what looks like the lily, uh, the cat lily um, roaming around and then the crew is waking up um, and the crew, um, here we go. We we have Hero, who's played played by Bob, uh, uh, or voiced by Bob uh, Bergen. Watt played uh, voiced by Steve Bullen. Uh, Walt uh, voiced by Richard Cancino. Um, a guy uh, who is voiced by uh, Russell Case. Dorothy, who, who is play, uh, placed by J.C. Henning. Uh, Dular, 
who was voiced by Steve Kramer, Nancy, who was voiced by Julie Madalena, um, Morgan, who was played by Kerrigan Mahan, uh, Carolyn, who was played by Iona Morris, Mike, who was played by Mike Reynolds, uh, Dick, who was played by uh, Gregory Snegif, uh, Jimmy, who was voiced by Michael Sorich, uh, Mead, who was uh, voiced by uh, Clifton Wells, and Sincam, the personal manager voice, is played by Tom Weiner. So um, ultimately, we have um, a captain who seems to be kind of like a Captain Ahab kind of a character. Um, and I like that he seems to have a nonchalant way, way about him. I, um, in fact, he's kind of like the level-headed group. And somewhere in between, we, real, uh, we are um, led to realize that um, the captain and um, one of his ship's officers a woman are actually close to uh, uh, the captain is actually 200 years old and the um sh uh, uh, the female ship um number one i would call her is actually 151 years old um and what happens is is as soon as the crew wakes up, um, they are sent a message by Sincam um, that is somewhat scrambled towards the end, but um, the, the captain is sent a message uh, that they have f uh, found out that two of the passengers on board are not who they say they are and are not Sincam employees, so they have to figure out who they are. Um, and uh, so th th there's kind of a whodunit uh, thing go uh, going on who exactly um, is the criminal. Um, and so they start pointing fingers at each other. Yet, um, people start dying. And uh, they end up realizing that inside the bodies of the dying, um, there is bacteria that is ever moving. And it, um, according to the doctor, Dr. Harris Mead, um, who was originally uh, voiced by Mahito Zujimira, uh, but um, is uh, voiced by Clifton Wells in the version that I saw, um, he actually uh, thinks it's some kind of Legionnaire's disease or, or something of that, uh, that effect. Um, so. You have this ever-changing, um, many eyeballed um, creature that seems to have all kinds of te uh, tentacles involved, and it, uh, and some of it uh, seems to be in uh, 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 transforming uh, with the um, Lily's cat. But uh, they also find out that the company Syncam has actually sent a rob uh, ro robot sized um cat that looks exactly and uh, uh, like lily cat to um take control of the computer if there is anything that happens because they don't really trust humans or uh, something of that na uh, nature so that uh, there's that going on and then we realize that uh, uh, the that one of the uh, one of the criminals i believe his name is mike um is actually being followed by one of the detectives who happens to have an Australian like voice. Um, so um, ultimately, it's kind of like a cat and mouse chase, kind of up against a creature that uh, 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 that uh, uh, just seems to come out from the inside. Uh, uh, it's a air vi uh, airborne virus, and They have to survive somehow. 
gets down to two people and there's a planet below so it's it's got elements of horror elements of science fiction and it's very detailed um from what i imagine um it, it was very and i remembered images of it too it, it still haunted me and i think my friend septum uh for, for letting me know what the title of this film was i had to um wh when i described it to, uh, to my friend septum he said i think it might be this and uh, when i saw it it was definitely it so i very much enjoyed watching it a second time because i i'm not sure if i saw it in its whole entirety but i i just loved the uh, some of the characters involved i, I like the cap uh, captain and his level-headedness and his nonchalantness when when everybody when all, all the uh, when any of the crew uh, wanted to go uh, go off and head in different directions he seemed to have an explanation for everything and uh, you know that it was just kind of over the top madness it was kind of a crazy film and dark and mysterious and it had a little bit of everything and that's what i liked about it so um i enjoyed revisiting this film i hope anyone out there listening uh can brave my rambling i was excited to finally re-watch this film and uh revisit it in my own way so hopefully you've enjoyed my description of this uh, uh, film i definitely thought that some of the uh, uh, uh the, some of the uh, uh the ship was cool i thought that um uh, uh, some of the walkways kind of looked like um you know those grates that were in star wars on the millennium falcon <laughs> so in any case um like and subscribe to my page if you have not definitely check out some of my other reviews um i certainly enjoyed uh describing this uh to my fans out there um if there are any um if you have seen this film definitely let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts were and uh hopefully you have a great day evening or morning wherever you are thanks for listening thanks for the traffic uh thanks ahead of time appreciate it